Yu-Gi-Oh! at its core has always been a competitive card game. And I feel like even though growing up with it and many others of us have grown up with it, we have our favorite cards. We know they're bad. We still love using them, of course. Separate from that, though, there has always been, and I feel like this applies to pretty much everybody that's played the game, there's the instinct to run an optimal play, right? Even dating back to the Structure Deck Yugi and Structure Deck Kaiba, where, you know, me as a kid picking up Structure Deck Yugi, I would always think to myself when looking through the cards, why would I tribute two for Dark Magician when I could tribute one for Summon Skull? And that's one less tribute. That's one less cards being used that are susceptible to, you know, being destroyed. Me, even as a child, thought of that, right? And so this game has always inherently been about the competitive play, going against an opponent and outplaying them, finding the means to defeat them, a showcase of skill, a showcase of luck, all of these things comboing together to make the game that we love. Now, what does that have to do with today's topic? Today's topic, we're rounding back to Rule Zero Conversations. And the thing with Rule Zero Conversations is I was wrong. Um, I have made a mistake in the past that I'm going to, moving forward, not say. Which I believe in multiple occasions in the Discord for Domain, as well as in some of my videos... I have called Domain format inherently a casual format, and that's the wrong phrasing. Domain format is a casual-friendly format, not that it itself is casual, because Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole can be deemed a casual-friendly game, you know, at a local level or with your friends, and in the case of the Domain format, you know, as a whole, yes, it is casual-friendly. People are encouraged to play whatever they want to play, and for others, that could be a optimal combo high-power deck. And for somebody else, it's something thematic, based on a video game, and we know it's not great, but it's fun to look at. Or it's a reference to something else. Or it's an anime, an anime deck, you know? There's so many ways to build and to uh, show off your own identity with a deck, of course. And now... Calling this format casual is wrong, because no matter what, you sit down at a table with three other players, the idea is to win, for the most part. And, and of course there is the outlier where somebody might truly never care if they win, they want to come in, and it's all about fun. And of course, one of the number one values of a game in general is to have fun. For others, it's to win. To call the format competitive is a stretch, though, because it is an alternative format with no means of professionalizing that victory, right? Because if you look at, you know, playing advanced, of course, the prizing's not good, but, you know, there are people known across the world for their skill, and those are the, you know, Jesse Cotton, the... um. That's really where my mind stops, I'm sorry, but you get the point. Joshua Schmidt, these kind of players that are prolific for the fact that they're good at the game. Uh, really, if we're going to be truly realistic about it, playing or calling Domain casual friendly is correct. Calling it casual is wrong. Calling it competitive is also wrong in a sense. Because there isn't a means to, you know, profit off of this. There's no means of a greater glory, right? You know, you're sitting down at a table in Discord, and of course you can play competitive decks for the sake of being competitive, but it's not professional. It's not truly competitive in a, you know, upper level regional national tournament sense. Of course, we will have our tournaments, but even then... That's not inherently going to be, you know, a truly high stakes event, you know. Um, and I feel like I'm getting off track, which I apologize for. This one's going to be more of a ramble than a constructed uh, essay of sorts about what I'm talking about. Um, but a big part of Rule Zero 
that I had said before is you need to talk to the people at your table. There is a debate as to whether Rule Zero is entirely necessary or if it is necessary. I am an advocate that it should be done. However, I am changing my view as to how to go about it. Rule Zero is not about the people around you. Rule Zero is about you. You listening. The person that is in charge of yourself. It is about you. Rule Zero, of course, the pregame conversation is for the most part to get an idea of what you're doing at the game. It's the idea of knowing what your people around you are playing. But realistically, it is so the individual, you, can procure your own experience. The idea is to create an experience suitable for you. Giving up that experience for someone else, I think, needs to not be a thing. If a person wants to play a very high-power deck, they can sit down with other high-power people. If they deceitfully not say what their deck's about, and they sit down and they pub-stomp a table, don't invite them back. It's plain and simple. It doesn't matter if it creates a socially awkward situation. I know that can be difficult because it sucks to deal with, but also it's about the individual's experience and... Them making you have a bad time should not matter if you're not having a good time. Move on. Find someone else to play with, right? Tell them to go play with someone else, plain and simple. But this still comes back to you, the individual who is in charge of what you do with your time. And time's important, right? Time's important for how long you watch a video, for how long you listen to someone ramble, for what you do at a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! to determine whether you're having fun or not. And a part of that is knowing what you are doing, right? There are a number of people that will sit down at a table and they might not inherently know how strong their deck is. They build something, they want to test it. Yes, of course. Not everybody's going to know 100% the range of their deck. But there's some giveaways that could be said to discern whether a table will want to deal with it. There have been a number of people flooding into the server recently. We've had a lot of people joining domain format. As it continues to grow in popularity, we've soared past 2K members recently, which is phenomenal. And with all these new people, we're of course going to have all kinds of different personalities and individuals and their own way of playing that are going to continue to come in and recycle situations we've been dealing with for a year, two years, three years, whatever, how long you've been involved, right? And so there's a rinse and repeat of these situations where someone comes in and they say, oh, I don't really know how strong my deck is, even though they could have said that it runs a bunch of floodgates, they could have said it runs a bunch of hand traps, it runs a lot of generically powerful cards, and they know that their deck is like of modern quality of, you know, archetype or whatever, And so someone else sits down at the table and hears that they're not sure how strong the opponent is. So they just throw out one of their, you know, janky or anime decks that isn't really intended to be super powerful. And then they get floored and then they're not having a good time. And the other person's like, I don't know. And it's like, well, you should know. There are giveaways to know how strong your deck is. If a person doesn't want to play with a bunch of floodgates, then you shouldn't bring a deck that inherently floodgates the opponent, or you should not run a deck that uh, negates or disrupts play as frequently as more modern stuff does, right? And there isn't really anything wrong with playing these decks. I'm not here to villainize a deck that is powerful, that can disrupt the opponent, control them, floodgate them, etc., because I tend to play decks that are of a, you know, adequate to a higher power that I can combat these things, Um, I don't really tend to play lower power stuff unless it's a very specific, like, shell of decks, like with my battle box that I made, where that's a specifically low power, like, goat format style of play, where normally I'm more about modern cards clashing with cards I'm passionate about and trying to play at a higher power against things of higher power. Um, But there is people that will not want to do that, and so... It's up to you to know what your deck is about. It's up to you to know where your deck ends and begins with power and disruption, with cards that people are, you know, they're not going to like, 
And it's about being open with the people around you of what your objective is. If you're here to have a good time, then just roll with it. If you're here to play a high power game, well, people should probably match that and not be floored for not bringing a p more powerful deck. Um, and that's really plain and simple. It's not about, you know, revealing your strategy. We've had some people that come in and they're like, there was like this one specific user that came in and they were like really against even revealing what their deck did. And I'm like, well, that's a huge red flag. I get that you're not trying to like reveal all of your secrets, but a general idea of what your deck does goes a long way so that everyone around you is also having a good time. It's not just about you, even though realistically the point of this video is that it is about you. You're in control of how your game goes for the most part, or really who you play with. So know what you're about in the game, know what your deck is about, and then make sure that your opponents match that vibe. If they don't, well, find a new table. What can I say? <sighs> We've had a lot of talk in the Discord lately about, there was a, a bunch of different things about Rule Zero and pregame and just knowing what the game is about and having agency over yourself. And I think it's important to just sit back and have an understanding of what you're playing. Uh, that way you don't, you know, ruin someone else's day. You know, I don't really want to come in and have a bad time with the little bit of time I do have to play a game I like to play. And for those that, uh, you know, disrupt tables with, powerful decks that don't fit the vibe of the table and uh for those that make it more a priority to it doesn't matter about the others if they're not having a good time because you're having a good time uh rethink where you are and what game you're playing if that's the case that's all i got for today just a little bit of rambling about rule zero and whether or not it matters uh truly but Honestly, I think it is important, and I think it needs to be a thing that is relevant to this game, as this is a different dynamic than just sitting down in a 1v1 in regular Yu-Gi-Oh! This is a group of people sitting down for an hour to a couple hours, whatever, 30 minutes, and, you know, that time is valuable, and you should have fun with it. So make sure that you know what you're doing, and with that, I thank you for watching, and I hope that this information goes a long way in helping you out in the future always remember to have a good time we love this game enjoy playing it but make it enjoyable for those around you too thank you for watching of course once again if you would like to support the channel you can subscribe down below we are approaching slowly 500 subs which is awesome i would love to hit that at some point in the future and if you would like to help with that you can just hit that button and you can hit the bell to be notified of all videos that come out on this channel and of course thank you for your time that is the most important part of it not about the sub button not about the comments of course i do love your thoughts down below but realistically it is the time spent watching these videos that i appreciate the most so i will see you guys in the next video have a good day Bye bye